Hi, everyone. A very warm welcome. It's our, it's our final panel of the conference. Great to have you with us. If each of you can just take a couple of minutes, um, introduce yourselves to everyone, and just tell us what you think is important to be talking about. Yeah, sure. Thank you all for having me. Um, before I want to talk speci um, specifically about SDG 6, I would just quickly introduce the company Georg Fischer, so George Fischer. We are a stock-listed company based in uh, Switzerland. And uh, one of our main business is to ensure that we transport water in a very efficient way to avoid leakages and that if you take a hot shower in the morning, the time you turn on uh, the tap, you receive hot water. Um, the second business that we are in is in producing lightweight car components to reduce the weight of the cars. And then the third business is um, everything about precision, so EDM machines, laser machines, to drill, for example, very precise, tiny holes. But I think SDG number six so on clean water and sanitation is very important because having access to water, having access to clean water is a basic human need, and without that, we can forget about all the other SDGs because it's just a priority. This is the basic engine that mm. drives all the others, and it starts with human dignity, doesn't it? Um, yes. Thomas. Yes, hi. Uh, my name is Thomas Fuhr. I'm working for the Grow AG, and I'm pretty sure that uh, everybody of you has already touched or used uh, one of our products <laughs> uh, because they are supplying this uh, tight resource. Uh, and we are manufacturing basically mainly faucets for bathrooms and kitchens, shower systems uh, you mentioned, and the flushing systems uh, for the toilets. Uh, and therefore, we are handling this uh, very, very tight resource water, and uh, we have therefore a huge responsibility. <clears throat> and that's uh, for me and for the company one of the major drivers. How can we do better? How can we conserve? And how can we basically use water more efficient? We heard at the beginning of the panels, it still is in my, in my mind, you know, the best energy is the saved energy. And I think uh, this counts also for me a little bit for water. That's our motto, how can we save, how can we conserve water? Because uh, it is a very, very tight uh, resource. 80% uh, of the planet is covered with water, but only 2% is drinking water. And this is unfortunately not distributed equally around the globe. So uh, it is a tricky uh, topic. We do love a tricky topic. We, yeah. you, you know, we really do like the thorny, challenging ones, that, yeah. that's for sure. And then, last but not least, on the SDG, I think uh, when I looked <coughs> through all the SDGs, our topic here, the number six, is one of the worst performing. Uh, and, and I think this is something, because we just said life without water, it's like oxygen, it's not possible, so we need to be acting now really. And it needs to not be perfect, but we need to act because uh, to be worth performing on something we all need is not acceptable. Uh, and therefore, for me today in the discussion would be basically how can we lift up uh, this SDG to the level where it belongs. To prioritize it. Mm -hmm. Manoj. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for having me here. My name is Manoj Rostaki. Uh, I work for JSW Cement Limited, uh, based out of uh, Mumbai, India. We are a cement uh, manufacturing company uh, into building materials. We also do the, uh, the alternative to uh, reverse sand, which is the slag sand. We have other cementitious material, uh, construction chemicals, you know, which uh, we have got into. And uh, in terms of the climate change, uh, we have uh, cement sector as such uh, is 7%, 7 to 7.5% 7 of the CO2 uh, contributor. Uh, it's hard to abate sector. Uh, we have worked on technologies and the processes uh, to reduce that. In fact, uh, within the cement sector globally, uh, for our size of company, you know, we are the lowest uh, uh, CO2 emitting uh, uh, company with a specific cement uh, uh, CO2 emission of 200 kg per ton of cementitious product. 
Uh, having said that, uh, you know, coming back to what Thomas was saying, uh, as a sector, uh, we use uh, water in the manufacturing. Uh, we have water uh, requirements, you know, which are, which are there during, at the time of the construction. Uh, there are ways and means to conserve water. Uh, for us, one of the main focus area is to, uh, is to work on conservation of water, uh, because, you know, water saved is like water earned. And uh, that is it, what we do. Uh, we are also working, you know, a uh, uh, lot of innovation on making products uh, which use uh, or consume, you know, less water uh, in the uh, building materials. Uh, so that is what, you know, uh, I would be uh, looking forward to talking uh, about. Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, Manoj. Sorry. Um, but also... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the card is here, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Mm, so, um, with our pumps, we, we transfer uh, water um, um, in an efficient way, but also in an intelligent and climate-friendly um, manner. And... Um, so I lost track now because of the microphone, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ricardo, I wanted to ask you a question, actually. I wanted to start by asking, you know, you're obviously a company for whom bringing to the water to the people is, is what you do. Yes. What That's, is that? Um, yeah, major contribution. And we contribute by um, creating access uh, to clean drinking water and bringing water to the people, yeah. That's and what does that landscape look like? I mean, we say clean water and sanitation is one of those ones that you say it's easy to say, but as you point out, um, Thomas, we're massively underperforming. What are the barriers? I know there are, you know, many of them to bringing clean water and therefore sanitation. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we all know that water is a precious resource, but it's also a wasted resource. Um, we, we need clean water obviously for drinking, but um, we, need, we also need huge, a huge amount of water for uh, agriculture and of course for industry. So um, the difficulty is we have on the one hand a huge demand for fresh water and on the other hand we have um, uh, a huge reduction um, or a shortage of resources. So there's a, a very important call, a very huge call for um, for efficient and reliable water solutions. So what we need is, we need system solutions for water extraction. We also have to optimize um, water distribution. So um, urbanization is increasing and this um, also increases the demand for water supply. But last but not least, and I think this is very important, um, we have to talk about water purification. We have to make it possible to re reuse and reprocess wastewater. Understood, and I could see you were nodding there. I will come to you, I promise, in just one sec, but I could see that you were nodding there, and I wonder what you feel like when, when you hear um, that this idea, this, this is something we're spectacularly failing at. As a goal, it seems to be down towards the bottom of the priority list and it's, it's so fundamental. What do you think about when you hear that? Yeah, I mean, if you just think about that one third of the water that is conveyed is actually lost due to leakages in piping networks that are like very old, you know, because our infrastructure in municipality there's, is normally around 50 to 100 years old and we really need to provide the infrastructure to, to digital valves, to sensors, to intelligent um, connected piping systems that can regulate the pressure that the water flows through those pipelines because in times of climate change having access to water is really important and as you also said water is a scarce resource and we have a lot of big cities that actually today already face water scarcity and therefore if you then also think about that only let's say one or two percent of a budget of a municipality is invested in um, strengthening the infrastructure. We really need to, to think about intelligent solutions of how to distribute this water safely, but also leakage free. Thomas, what did you want to add? I think uh, I agree what you said. Uh, however, I think it's a twofold topic. 
that's one thing. There are areas on this earth where water is available. Here in Europe, we are on the sunny side. Uh, and there it's all about efficiency, uh, bringing the water safe, avoid leakages, but also what I think here is mostly missing is our own behavior. Do you know how much water you spend and for what and how? I had no clue before I started in this yeah. industry. Yeah. I have two uh, daughters and they both have long hair, so yeah, I'm guessing it's exactly. a lot. Yeah. So, and, there are, and we heard also during this uh, uh, couple of days was always the topic, you know, you can't manage what you can't measure. Uh, and therefore, this is something where we, I think there needs to be a good part of focus uh, in this developed countries where water is, uh, is available. Uh, and then if you go in the, in the part of the world where water is not available, and these are more than two billion people who have not access to clean water. We open the tap and can wash hands. <laughs> they can't. Uh, and there I think education is important. Uh, the guest uh, a speaker before mentioned uh, um, th bringing them up, educate them, make them to plumbers, make sure that they can get develop uh, the water in a way that it's properly managed. I think these are two different streams to, to work on. And there are solutions for everything. I believe, I don't know if you know, but we, both companies together, have opened this week in Ghana a school, reopened it basically, uh, the yeah, the company. collaboration yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about <laughs> cooperation. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Tell tell us all about it. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. Of course, um, uh, what we need is technology that is applic uh, applicable. Uh, and a technology needs to adjust to local conditions. Well, we, we have implemented technology. Of course, uh, we also need the people who are able to use and maintain it. So we have to enable people, and um, you already mentioned it, um, we are in a um, private-public partnership together um, and um, um, address uh, water issues and also our intercapacity development. And I think it's uh, more than just supporting with trainings and education, and of course that is important. But um, I think it's also very important to work together with local authorities, with the Ministry of Water, with the Ministry of Education, to really, um, to really integrate all these really important topics into the curricula and to make sure that they uh, get taught um, in, the long, in the long term. So as you, meant, uh, as you mentioned, I really like the impression to give projects legs. I didn't know that um, expression before, but this is exactly what, um, what is meant by that, to really enabling people in the long term to use sustainable technology. And that goes beyond, of course, just selling in a product. That means of a long-term relationship, course. trust building, it's education. It's not about just bringing technology in. I mean, of course, that's important, but you have to make sure that it exists and is being able to be used and maintained in the long term. Manoj, I know when we spoke before, we spoke, I mean, cement, obviously, the, the most widely human-made material in the world. Um, what does it look like, that landscape within your industry, which I know there's a huge amount of awareness in your company looking at different products, conserving energy, but is that will experienced across the board or you know, are there a number of countries that still have their head in the cement? So specific to the cement industry, uh, you know, if we talk about uh, uh, the plants, you know, which are old, uh, uh, most of the plants, you know, which are there in Europe and North America. Uh, over a period of time, the technology has made the processes more efficient. Uh, so whether it is the thermal uh, specific power consumption, specific heat consumption, the newer plants, uh, which we, uh, we work with a lot of German companies, you know, and the European companies, and the technologies are available, you know, which are more efficient. Uh, for for conserving you know the fossil fuels uh, conserving uh, electricity conserving water uh, for water is specifically like you know for we do waste heat recovery boilers in our plants uh, so we take the waste heat you know which is coming from the process and use it you know to generate electricity out of it so we don't have to take the electricity from the state utilities you know which are using coal as a fuel 
and this is a waste, you know, which is converted into electricity, which is like 70%, you know, uh, meets the requirement of our process requirement. Uh, there we use air-cooled condensers instead of the water-cooled condensers. Uh, so there is a technology, you know, using the air, you know, to cool uh, 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 rather than using water. So we don't use water at all. And there are other ways, you know, in which the, the water usage uh, is, is reduced. She was talking about, I think, you know, it's, it's not only the portable water, the drinking uh, water. It is about the water which is used by the industry and, uh, you know, other uh, places. And then, you know, the leakage as she was talking about, you know. So it's, it's the, the, the water, how do you look at the technologies, the new technologies, uh, the processes, you know, which, is, which are not using the water or looking at ways not to use the water. And when you're using the water, make it most efficient, you know. Uh, to use it and avoid leakages and inefficiencies into it. It's interesting that when I listen to each one of you talk, again, this is one of these multi-layered problems, but also one, and Thomas, you hit upon it, where there's something that we can all do sitting in this room right now. But it feels to me, although I know that water is important, I understand that preserving water is important, I'm not sure I go through life with that awareness. You know, it's not like um, every person has a kind of quota and they say, right, Julie, you have X, which would really, I think, make me focus on it. Why don't we focus on it? I mean, it is a massive problem and we have to lead the way, but why, why don't we focus on it? Is it just that it's hard to change human and consumer behavior? No, I, I think because for us here in Europe, uh, in, in a lot of areas, it is not a problem. And look at your water bill. Water is too cheap. Yeah, there is no need to, to spend too much time about it. On the other hand, we as an industry can help to change this behavior. So where we basically, this was also mentioned the other day at some point in time, you know, if you drive your car, uh, you see how the fuel gauge is uh, going down. Uh, if I move my shower, I should have uh, an indication how much water I'm using. Uh, and. Uh, get the behavior and oh, I want to, this time I want to try it uh, with 10 liters less. So that's something where we can support. Uh, but on the other hand, water is still a very, very cheap resource compared to uh, the scarcity we, we actually have on it. Yeah, it doesn't make sense at all, does it? I can see you nodding away there, Anne-Marie, when Thomas is talking. Can you imagine a scenario where we move in the developed world towards um, that awareness, you know, more, more boldly, if you like. I hope so. <laughs> yes. No, I think it's it, it's it's very important because currently, and I think this was also said during the other panels, the other two days. Um, but our main focus is on CO2 emissions. But there are more there are more important resources on Earth, and we should not only concentrate on CO2 emissions. It's just one of them, and I think. We now currently do understand the way of when we emit CO2, what then happens in the atmosphere and leads to global warming and then maybe water. We do not have the full understanding currently because here, as you said, in Europe, water is available and we do not face water scarcity. But I think once we have solved this uh, CO2 emission issue, let's say it that way, uh, we can, we should focus on other resources and I think water is one of them and we as industrial companies, I mean, we are in the water business, but we should also start to reduce our water intensity. So not only providing our customers the, the products and solutions to enable them to reduce water consumption, but also do our homework and start to, re to reduce our water consumption when producing our products. I, I agree, but Taking uh, my company, for example, we can reduce our water consumption, but our products are long lasting. You know, if you have your bathroom, your kitchen, the faucets, they are working 15, 20 years. So, uh, uh, and, and the usage is actually in the customer hand. 95% of CO2 emission and water consumption is all in customer hand. So we need to make sure that we change the behavior uh, plus uh, uh, also do our best to, uh, to, re to reduce the consumption with technology at, at all. And I think technology is available. It's sometimes a little bit too costly. And uh, I have, for example, a vision that uh, we will generate a house which doesn't need a water pipe anymore. 
Yeah? It will be completely water neutral. Uh, and technology is there. It's not yet completely uh, uh, incorporated everywhere, but we can do this, I'm pretty sure. It's interesting that you mention that because when I think of you know an energy efficient house, of course I think through the lens of CO2. I think solar panels. I think I don't yeah. think about water yeah. at all, which is really interesting, isn't it? Um, Ricardo, when we were talking before, sorry, you wanted to uh, respond. Yeah, yeah. I, I would love to add. Um, we were talking about awareness, and um, when we look for partners in order to put into practice projects, of course it's it's uh, important to find the right partners. And you make uh, you need to um, make people understand and partners understand the added value sustainable technology has. And um, I mean, we are a pump provider, so it's for us. Uh, it's all about pumps. And um, I think, especially when you have a look at a component such as pumps, um, it's it's a it's a component that is highly underestimated. You know, it's part of our day uh, day to day life. And if we take away pumps, this uh, would be literally make it impossible to, to continue live as it is at the moment. So there is a huge impact uh, as a component um, for a stable infrastructure. And um, pumps alone make up, uh, uh, take up 10%, make up 10% of the worldwide uh, electricity consumption. And uh, just imagine the potential a component like pumps have um, when you uh, replace obsolete technology um, and uh, instead use high uh, efficiency technology. That is huge. And you have to find partners that understand that it's you know, not stopping here. It's not only about the product itself, but it's about the long-term perspective. And that's very essential to create this awareness um, and these partners we, we love to work with because then we can really um, not only add impact on sustainable development, but really create uh, social change. And when we talk about what the drivers might be for the social change, and this is a question to all of you, where, where does that drive to change come from? Do we need, as we say, legislation to create that innovation? Do we need a government to say, okay, everyone's going to have, you know, uh, an amount of water that they can use, for example, or in your business manage, you have to create new sustainable building materials at the rate of, I don't know, however much a year. Where does it need to come from that drive to change? It's to come from us. Very clearly. Uh, we need to lead uh, this because otherwise it will not be done. And uh, we will make failures on the way. Uh, not everything will be perfect and it doesn't need to be perfect. 80-20 is good enough uh, because it solves a, a lot of uh, uh, topics, but we need to get going. Uh, and of course, we can always say, you know, we need to have regulation and stuff like this. It is important, yeah, but everybody, we all can do a lot uh, if we start running. Uh, and I think uh, if we start running, others will follow uh, and we get the right, uh, uh, um, yeah, the right mass. I somewhere. think somebody said yesterday about taking care of your own backyard, which spoke to me. Start there and then expand. Manoj, what did you want to add? So I agree. Uh, but at the same time, I, I, I still feel, you know, we need to have incentives, uh, a structure in place. Uh, uh, so one of the things, you know, Thomas was talking about, you know, water is cheap, uh, you don't have to pay for that, so you don't realize the value for that. Uh, similarly, you know, for the resources, uh, to understand the value, uh, we need to have, uh, whether it is a legislation or whether, you know, some sort of a commercial construct, where the value has to be attached, you know, to the resource and to the energy efficiency and the conservation. Uh, so you have performers, you know, which are doing very well, uh, and then there are non-performers, so they need to be differentiated. Uh, that type of the structure has to come in place. Uh, so it is, for the companies, I think it is important for, for companies, you know, at our level uh, to do, you know, whatever we have to do. But at the same time, you know, the differentiation. Uh, say one of the things, you know, Thomas was saying, we don't even meter, you know, the water, you know, what we consume, and on the shower, you know, we. We don't know how much we're consuming, so we don't realize the value of it. Uh, so the same way, I think the, the performance, we need to really uh, move in a, in, in, a, in a construct, you know, where we are able to differentiate that, okay, you know, these are the performing companies and these are non-performing companies. 
and have some sort of incentive structure, you know, whether it is through the government or through the associations or through the World Bank or the, the banks, financial institutions, whatever it is, but that should be put in place. Yeah. Anna, what do you think? I think in the end, everything is connected. And also, the way we use water has an influence on CO2 emissions, because if, for example, there's a lot of leakage in the transport of water, we use a lot of energy for the pipes to transport the water to our house, and then if like a third of it gets lost, it's just a loss of energy. And we really think that everything is connected, and we need to, yeah, to not think in silos, but to think the entire cycle. So each organization needs to do a bit of thinking for the next. We need to have, it's almost like overlapping circles of thought rather than just thinking about this one problem in one way. Ricardo, a final thought from you. Well, I'm really a fan of structure, but we have to um, make sure that regulations do not uh, stop innovation. And um, I heard uh, someone was saying yesterday, I think, that technology is an opportunity but it also means responsibility. And for a green technology company, we can kind of turn it around and say, yes, it's our responsibility to um, bring water to the people. And we all know that the, that the impact is for region, but it also opens up uh, uh, for us opportunities. And it's um, necessary that we take them and put them into practice. Fantastic, everybody. Thank you so much for your insight and your involvement in our panel. That brings all of our panels to a close, everyone. Thank you so much to our audience as well for staying with us. And I hope that you've all learned something. I certainly have. So thank you to all of you. Thank you.